Have you ever been discharged from a doctor's office with instructions to eat healthy and lose weight and you get to your car and you're like, oh my goodness, like, I don't even know what to do. Or is it that you have a sweet tooth and you find yourself hiding to satisfy that sweet tooth? Do you want to know or do you struggle to figure out how to eat healthy without having to resort to carrots and broccoli? <laughs> well, if you answered yes to any of those questions, you will want to listen up to this video because I'm going to give you five different foods that you can add or incorporate into your regular meals and they bring benefits, lots of additional benefits and nutrition to you without them causing worsening of your health. For those of you meeting me for the first time, I am Dr. Amina Goodwin, a physician and health coach, and I help you, especially people with blood sugar problems who struggle with being overweight, to figure out how to eat better so that you can feel better and get on with your life without having to go into the doctor's office too often. All right, we're going to get into it. So five things, and I have some examples here of five foods, just general foods that you can incorporate into your regular day-to-day -day eating, right? The first one is actually nuts. So I have an example here of pecans, one of my favorites. And nuts are really good because they are rich in healthy fats. They also have quite a bit of protein as well. And additionally, because they have some starch, they have that sweetish taste. So sometimes you can surprisingly have some satisfaction to your sweet tooth. Another thing with nuts also is that they have vitamins, good amounts of those fat soluble vitamins, especially vitamin E. And the thing that I do with nuts is that I like to, well, I incorporate them into my baking. If I bake cookies, I bake cookies this past weekend. If I make my banana bread and so on and so forth. But also you can chop nuts and sprinkle them onto to whatever cereal it is that you're having and you can also have chopped nuts added to your salad so some really good benefits without having to eat too much and they're quite satisfying satisfying because of their um relatively high fat content okay nuts you can also try sliced almonds or just nuts in general second thing i'm going to mention is kimchi so kimchi that's a fermented fruit and um, you can see it here, um, it's uh, essentially, it's usually carrot and cabbage and some um, companies might add ginger or whatever. You can actually make kimchi on your own and I'm going to figure that out one of these days. But the good thing about kimchi is that it gives you good amounts of healthy gut bacteria, gut bugs, like good bacteria that our bodies actually need to be able to work properly. In addition to getting good bacteria from kimchi, you also get probiotic sorry prebiotics so the bacteria the good bacteria we refer to as probiotics and a lot of people take supplements but the thing is with supplements you're really not sure what you're getting sometimes but with this right essentially a living food you know you have to keep this in the fridge and you can taste that it actually has um kind of there's some fermentation so you know there's bacteria in it because you can sort of taste it whereas if you're swallowing a pill you really don't know if you're getting dead bugs or not right as i was alluding to a thing with kimchi as well is that in addition to giving you the probiotics the good bacteria you get prebiotics which is the food that the bacteria need to feed on and that is the fiber from the cabbage and the carrots that are right there so you get into pre and probiotics and that's excellent good thing about kimchi as well you just need a little bit you can add a spoonful to your plate and it adds some variety to your dish you get that nice little tart um taste which just kind of helps to spice up your meals a little bit and like i say a little bit goes a long way you're getting good benefits from kimchi and adding kimchi and spicing thing is up right third thing i'm going to mention is goji berries so you know we always talk about berries as being um a good addition good type of fruit especially for people who struggle with blood sugar problems um because they have a low glycemic index they do not carry your blood sugar up as much right um additionally berries are known to be rich in antioxidants things that help with inflammation and just a lot of vitamins and minerals and nutrients in general berries depending on where you are could be a little on the expensive side and also they may be perishable and you just might not be able to keep up with eating them like that so something like having some dry goji berries dried goji berries um well it's just there you have it there and you can sprinkle goji berries i like goji berries because of the taste nice tart taste um they also have this sort of nice sort of chewy um consistency in the mouth and you can add them because of that tart taste. You can add them to boring things like chia pudding, which might not be the most tasty, but adding the goji berries and even the nuts can help enhance the taste of um, of the something like a chia pudding or any kind of cereal. Goji berries also, antioxidants, like I said, they are surprisingly in the, um, I didn't realize this 
before but they are in the tomato family so you can get beta carotene lycopene and so on from them um so yeah goji berries are another thing that you can add to your food um or just add to your general meals you know keep it in your house fourth thing i'm gonna mention is uh, chocolate specifically dark chocolate so this is actually cacao nibs fermented cacao nibs is raw chocolate and Raw chocolate, I mean, a lot of people uh, refer to themselves as chocoholics. My mother says uh, she's a chocoholic and a lot of people find themselves addicted to chocolate um, because chocolate also is one of those things. It really gives a very pleasing feeling, if not even pleasurable when you eat it. And um, chocolate is known, of course, to have a lot of good uh, nutrients, phytonutrients, just plant nutrients, also antioxidants. And surprisingly, too, chocolate, especially the raw chocolate, is very, very rich in fiber. So for every dose or rather serving of this chocolate that I have in this packet, they call a serving one teaspoon. And that has one gram of carbohydrate. And of the one gram of carbohydrate in each uh, serving size, 0.8 grams is fiber. So 80% of raw chocolate is actually fiber. Fiber is good for bacteria as well. You can refer to, think of fiber as prebiotic. So this will be good for the beneficial bacteria you're getting from the kimchi. This is fermented. So there's some amount of bacteria, no doubt you're getting probiotics you're getting from this, right? And like I said, it has good phytonutrients, antioxidants, and um, just wholesome benefits for the body. This, because it's raw, it's not sweet. And it might, uh, you might detect slight bitter taste. And so it makes it much harder to overeat compared to milk chocolate, which is like sugar and just a whole bunch of other additives. And so it's much easier to overeat that, that. The cacao nibs, raw nibs, you can sprinkle them again into your cereal. I use them in baking. I baked cookies this past weekend and I added some of those to the cookies. So very good addition. A little goes a long way. Get big bang for your buck because of the nutrients that it has um, for the small amount of um, dose that you can get. And then the fifth and final thing I'm going to mention is beef pollen all right so bee pollen and again a little goes a long way how we've had this bottle for quite a while bee pollen is something that is very rich in vitamins and minerals i mean i always think of when i take bee pollen of, ta of, of taking like a vitamin pill right it has a bunch has the fat soluble vitamins a vitamin d vitamin e it has the water soluble vitamins as well b vitamins vitamin c it has amino acids um very vitamin rich um, and also it has uh, just a bunch of other nutrients, antioxidants, and in general, anything that has antioxidants and a bunch of plant nutrients, phytonutrients, they help fight inflammation. And inflammation is just a massive problem nowadays in general because of the diet, uh, the common diets we're exposed to, um, lifestyle, just environmental pollution, uh, pollutants and so on and so forth, right? So um, so all these things, I, B palm was the last one I mentioned, but all of these are things that a little, you have, you bite all of these packages, except for the kimchi that goes a little quicker but you buy them they're not very perishable and you can keep them and add a little of this one one day a little of that one one day and the whole family can enjoy these things and you can get big bang for your buck where a small dose gives you a big amount of nutrients and general benefits for your body right so just to summarize them again we spoke about raw nuts the second one was kimchi raw nuts i know you can listen back you listen back to this to hear the benefits but raw nuts kimchi, goji berries, dried goji berries, cacao, raw cacao nibs, and pollen. Five foods, healthy foods, that you can add to your day-to-day -day meals to enhance them, give you a lot of good nutritional benefit without having your doctor worry that you're making your numbers worse. I hope you all found this helpful. And if you did, go ahead and share the video with somebody else who you think will benefit. Thanks for watching.